Well, um, since we have in our minds the last piece that we saw and the wonderful Rama Vaitinathan that offered to present this piece to us, I'll start with you, Rama, and ask you, you've got, what made you want to choreograph this? The Navarasa to us dancers are the nine emotions, as you gathered. And usually we do them as a shloka, which is a chant with no rhythm. This is a full-fledged piece, like a varnam almost. It has nitta. You show the abstract dance, and in that you also show the emotion. Would you like to say something about that? It's actually a very, very short four-line Sanskrit shloka from the 10th tenth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And it actually describes just what happened in that one minute when Krishna enters the arena in Mathura amidst a huge, huge audience just about to kill Kamsa. Thousands of people are waiting with bated breath to see what would be the outcome between Krishna and Kamsa. And this four-line shloka says nine different people looked at Krishna in nine different emotions. So just what happened in that one minute is explored in the dance interpretation for 20 minutes. When the poet could do it in four lines, I thought I could do it in 20 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Talking about the emotions, to see a padam sung by a very dear friend of mine, Aruna Sairam, a fantastic singer from the South, a Carnatic form. Um, first of all, I'd like to know, I'd like to congratulate you for the bringing out of the emotions because that is not normally seen in ballet as much. Eriko, can you say something about what it was like to experience this? Okay. So, hello, I'm, my name is Eriko. I came from Japan and then um, uh, I started at the age of at age, age of three, I started ballet training, and uh, I learned ballet, contemporary, modern, contemporary jazz, jazz, and also character dance. And for me, it was difficult to mix very beautiful Indian music and my styles, because I feel like uh, I want to show something from my body, but I need to make something, my face, eyes, bless. So it was difficult, but this experience was very special for me. Yeah. And, and of course, this is the, in most cases, everybody mm -hmm. whom you saw dance choreographed pretty much the piece themselves. But this piece is actually the brainchild of Srinath. Could you talk something about this? Because this has been a project very dear to your heart. Yeah. Um, the, first of all, it's just an honor to be part of uh, such amazing dancers. Uh, and uh, work, we, we actually work last minute. So when we met, it was a, a quite a new experience for me. So uh, taking a project like Padam was uh, more sort of a responsibility rather than just expression-based uh, choreography. And uh, I knew earlier version of Padam, which uh, Rajika Ji has done with uh, Aruna Saramji, and, and I've seen that uh, the first time. That's where I've seen uh, flamenco and other stuff happening. So I wanted to find another a movement language to put these pieces together. and. Then when we were studying together and we were exploring what we can bring together. So uh, ballet and uh, touching Indian aesthetics and dealing with the complex uh, temple dancing culture was uh, quite a responsibility. Uh, well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Suraj, I think the most exciting thing about you, apart from your dancing, is all the different places you come from. Would you like to first start and tell us how you came to Bharatanatyam, Odissi, and a little bit of Kathak? Um, 
So I, I was born and grew up in Malaysia, where I studied uh, Bharatanatyam and Odyssey from my guru Ramli Ibrahim. Uh, I then traveled to Australia, uh, was at university for a few years, uh, did a diploma in, in classical ballet and contemporary dance, and promptly then moved on to London, where I was auditioning to work uh, as a professional dancer. Uh, and there I studied uh, Kathak, took on a little bit of Kathak uh, from Urja Thakur, who was a student of Kumudini Lakhia. Um, I have since uh, moved yet again. I live now in Belgium, uh, where I freelance as a, a performer. Uh, and, and this work was done, I mean, because you use each of the Indian forms you've studied as well as the other forms. Yes. It's a wonderful amalgam. So this happened where? Uh, this, hap this was created in 2011. So whilst I was in the midst of teaching Bharatanatyam in London and performing Bharatanatyam and Odyssey and taking ballet and contemporary class on the weekends and uh, doing some Kathak on the side. So, um, uh, and yeah. on, on Monday, you will see him do Odyssey, a very, very traditional piece uh, from my Gurukul, which is the lineage of Devi Prashad Das. But now we come to Cynthia, who is not the first time who's been with us. You've uh, been with Erasing Borders, I think, in 2009, was it? Maybe. At the Asia Society? I thought it was 10, but anyway. I'm not sure. Um, can you tell us a little bit about post natyam because sure. you're, the person who was speaking is your colleague and you work in a collective together in, uh, you st it's, it's based in Southern California, right? Yeah. Not anymore, you're all moving on. We're transnational there. actually, so I'm uh, part of a collective called post natyam and we have members, uh, Sandra Chatterjee who is the dramaturg for the piece is based kind of between Germany and Austria, then spends a lot of time in India. Um, Shamla Murthy, who is a director, is in the Los Angeles area, and I recently moved back from North Carolina to California. Um, so we have a collective where we collaborate online. We give each other assignments, we do studies, give each other feedback, and so um, this piece was a combination of working in person, Shamla and I in the studio, and working online. Um, and also the result of working between critical theory and um, choreographic practice. So we're doing a lot of reading about gender and performance from both Western and um, South Asian perspectives to produce the work. Well, thank you. Um, talking about online, <laughs> your online relationship is fascinating, Rivanta. <laughs> because um, the idea of, you know, the old padams do give you situations that are really 19th century situations or older. And I feel that young people sometimes cavil at having to express love and express the frustrations of being in love, um, but using images that really are old hat. So tell us something about the genesis of this piece that you did. So I grew up doing Bharatanatyam from a very young age. Uh, and by the time I got to about 18 or 19, you know, one learns a large repertoire of padams and varnams and so on. And I've never been a very religious person and I started thinking to myself, you know, I'm dancing about divine love to gods and goddesses and, and you know, I, I feel that it, it's part of the heritage of the dance. Um, but I also started feeling like I wanted to dance about things that were more contemporary, that were more relevant to me in my life today in the 21st century. And it was during my time living in London that I was commissioned by Academy for uh, a project called Dare Devas, which is essentially... And just uh, Academy is this big institution that does amazing stuff. Correct. Indian Academy dance. is one of, the oldest, one of the oldest institutions that support South Asian dance in the UK. Mm -hmm. And so I was commissioned by them to create two short pieces that allowed me to use Bharatanatyam vocabulary, but to innovate with it. 
And so this was one piece that came out of that, uh, which ultimately went on to be part of a full-length dance theater production called LDR, which explored long-distance relationships. Thank you. And of course, we were intending and hoping to see him in his new work, Duet, but his partner was one of the people that did not get her interview in time, unfortunately. I hope to partner. bring it here next year. Yes, yeah. well, <laughs> um, Abhijit, what I find so fascinating tonight is usually when the dance was revived in the 30s and 50s and 60s, there were mainly women dancing, and I'm delighted to see that we are equally, it's 50-50 today, and wonderful dancers. Really, yes, I think so. And the interesting thing is that at that time, Kuchipudi, which is the dance drama form that is done by the Bhagavatars of the village of Kuchipudi, was suburned and taken by the divas of dance in the 70s and 80s and became a solo recital form. And I'm delighted to see a man again dancing. And Thank could you. you tell us something about your tradition, your guru? Yes, sir. So, uh, I started in Kalakshetra, so I came to Chennai. Oh, sorry, okay. I am basically from Shantiniketan, which is West Bengal. So I always wanted to be a solo performer. And initially, I started uh, training in Kathakali. I have a, like, I learned Kathakali for three years. And I realized that it's very difficult for me to be a solo performer. So that's the reason I came to Chennai to study Bharatanatyam, because I never knew what is Kuchipri. I never seen before. So when I was learning Bharatanatyam in Kalakshetra, during that time it happened that I went to a performance and I saw Kuchipuri and I was just like mesmerized. I said, okay, so let me give it a try. So that's how I started Kuchipuri. And since I started learning, I said, okay, this is how, like, you no, know, this is what exactly I want to perform. So that's how I got into Kuchipuri. And my first initial guru was uh, like, you know, he, he's no more, so I can tell him like, you know, let Guru Bhimpati Chinna Satyam. So I started my journey in Kuchipuri Art Academy, and that's how I started learning Kuchipuri. And when I was learning this piece, which I have done it today, it is very close to me, um, like you know, in a personal level. But I have seen him teaching this item, though I haven't learned from him directly. But uh, I am I, I have learned this item from my present guru, Guru Jagdishwar Musalikanti. And so when I saw that item, I asked my present guru that could you please teach me this item? This is absolutely amazing because in 10 minutes you represent all the 10 avatar it's like so much of story like you know it's very difficult to tell really huge number of stories like you know in a small space like you know so th that's how i started and so when i applied in th this festival i think i have sent a couple of videos so they said oh that's what I'm looks nice why don't you do it and and in fact <laughs> it, um th what i haven't said and unfortunately we have to clear the hall and the lobby by nine o'clock and normally I would love to have you ask questions but we don't have time right so I'll, I'll, what I did want to say is that Abhijit will be doing a tarangam which is also a, a typical Kuchipudi piece at the battery dance festival on the 15th of August and as I mentioned earlier Suraj will be doing a classical Odissi piece uh, Sthai um, so we encourage you to come and we'll take two questions. These people have been so good and so precise that maybe we can g get some questions in here. Do we have, do we have, um, no, does anybody have a mic for him? Uh, for Suraj and Ravanta, would you be the same artist you are today had you never left India? And for you, you began in Malaysia, I understand. But would your art have stayed the same had you stayed entirely in India? Who, who are we asking? For Suraj and myself, right? Suraj and the, or anyone who has, you know, that situation. Okay. I'll answer very quickly. Um, I first left India for a significant amount of time when I came to college in Philadelphia. And I did my undergraduate here. And I noticed very clearly a shift in perspective 
towards my own dance practice, towards the classical tradition that I was coming from. And then later on, I moved to London. I did a master's there, and I lived there for two or three years. And I think those experiences most definitely changed who I was, changed the way I looked at my own work and my creative practice. Uh, just to clarify, I was never in India. I, was, I have Indian heritage, but I was uh, born in Malaysia um, and having lived in several places. I had my heart broken when I was in Australia, uh, and that continued while I lived in London. Uh, um, I'm usually a very sound sleeper, but I uh, experienced extreme sleepless nights when I was in London. Uh, and I've been going to the toilet most of my life, so... Uh, <laughs> I don't think I would be the person I am today without having had those experiences. <laughs> Hi, uh, this is a question for uh, Mrs. Vaidinathan. Um, my question to you is, uh, with a lot of um, young or second generation dancers, dancers who have grown up overseas and this is a link to their heritage, um, there, there's always the um, I guess the tussle between performance and finding the spirituality in what we do. Um, what has been, I guess, the technique you've found that works best in being able to incorporate both of, both of those? I think it's about, yeah, it's not about Hindu religion. And I, I think it's about philosophy. And it can be secular. So even when you're talking about Krishna or Shiva, you are talking about that energy, that supreme consciousness. And we just give it a form because it's easy to depict and portray. So as far as um, connecting with spirituality in this country, or I think it's the same wherever you are. It's just that dialogue that you have. And I think what is God for us dancers is the dance and nothing else. So as long as we keep dance as our God, art as our God, I think we should be on the right track. Thank you. And thank you very much, Barry, and everybody else who has helped to make this easy. And now, unfortunately, we have to get people as out of here as fast as possible. Thank you for coming. Good night. Namaste.